Okay, so today is the first episode of my Everyday Stir Fry series that I've been talking about. And just a brief rundown of what this series is about. It's very simple things that you can do to help improve the quality of your stir fry dishes. I want them to be nice and simple, easy steps, just explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and these kinds of things, and hopefully you guys learn. Now this is a very small kitchen, it's in a hotel. It's a, I've got a very small underpowered electric cooktop. You don't have to have fancy equipment. Of course it helps and it's really great for videos, but hey, I imagine the average housewife in China does not have an afterburner from a MiG jet fighter jet. I don't think she has that for cooking. She probably doesn't have a million BTU wok burner. Probably has a nice little cooktop, produces heat, heats a pan, she cooks. That's simple. So, but you have to take that into account when you cook. If you have a very high powered burner, you have to do things that you don't have to do on a low powered burner. On a low powered burner, you have to do things that you don't have to do on a high powered burner. It's simple enough, right? And we'll go over all this step at a time. We'll take you along and we're gonna teach you. That's the whole purpose. If you're looking for the entertaining fire shooting up Nah, won't be in this series. I'm hoping to do some of that later. Got a big, nice burner at the house. Anyway, let's get started. And what we're gonna do today, we're gonna talk about some basic pantry items that you should have. We're gonna keep it simple because I know not everybody has a big budget to go out and buy $1,000 worth of ingredients to cook one dish. I understand that. I'm gonna go over and explain the wok that I'm using and why I'm using that one and give you some tips on picking out a wok that is probably suitable for you. Whether you decide to use the exact wok I'm using, something else, these kinds of things. Just some tips, pointers, and advice. Okay, uh, pantry items. These are, your, these are the items that I pretty much consider essential for doing stir frying. You don't have to use everything. I mean, in some of my videos you see me do using all kinds of stuff. But these, it all comes down to basically this. You, and uh, if, you're, if you have allergies to anything, like I know people who are allergic to corn, they cannot use cornstarch. But you still need some kind of thickening agent, and so you can use potato starch or tapioca starch or something else. Uh, peanut oil, I use peanut oil. The reason I use peanut oil is because of the high smoke point, however, there are a lot of people who are out allergic to peanuts and cannot use oil. They, or peanut oil, so they'll use corn oil. So don't be afraid to substitute. So let's get started. Aromatics, ginger, garlic, green onion. These get used a lot, especially ginger and garlic. They don't get in, they are not in every dish, but they are very common to use. Ginger and uh, onion or garlic, green onion, and I consider this two vegetables. I consider the white part one and the green part another. So anyway, we'll be using those. Hoisin sauce, oyster sauce. These are used very commonly to flavor the sauce. They're, they get used differently. Sometimes I use them together. Sometimes the dish will only have hoisin and sometimes it'll have oyster. If you don't like one, don't use that one. Use the other one. It's pretty simple. For marinating meat and stuff, I use a lot of uh, rice cooking wine. You don't have to. You can use other things. Uh, you can use a little chicken stock, a little water, because I know a lot of people don't drink. Some people are allergic to alcohol. Some people have really bad are allergic reactions and we don't want that. Some people for religious reasons don't use alcohol. Some people just don't like to. It's all good. Anyway, this stuff's pretty cheap. It's Shaoxing cooking wine. It's good stuff. And then uh, sometimes, this is the clear one. Uh, normally I use the brown one, but this time I'm using the clear one. No problem. Soy sauce. Must be a million kinds of soy sauce out there. There's, this is just basically the plain light soy sauce. And uh, I happen to like this brand. Uh, there's some other good brands out there. Um, 
there's dark soy sauce, there's thick soy sauce, there's sweet soy sauce. But anyway, you need some kind of light soy sauce. This is a Chinese brand. The Japanese versions are more mild, like Kikkoman. Kikkoman is a prime example of a Japanese style soy sauce. It works good too. Sesame oil. I use roasted sesame oil. You can also use the uh, non-roasted sesame oil. A lot of Chinese dishes actually use the non-roasted, but I pretty much always use the roasted sesame oil. As discussed, I use peanut oil for stir frying because it has a very high smoke point and because it, oil that's smoking is breaking down. So if the oil starts smoking, you need to do something pretty quick. So when you see me cooking, I'm trying to get it hot, but I don't want it just smoking like crazy because if you're smoking like crazy, that means the oil's breaking down and that's not healthy for you. Is it cornstarch. I use it when I'm marinating meat and I use it as a thickening agent. But like I said, potato starch is a very good substitute. Sugar and salt. I like sea salt. Uh, I use a little bit of that. Soy sauce is salty because it, soy sauce is made with soybeans and salt. That's soybean, salt, and water are the main ingredients that go into soy sauce. But still, it, it, sometimes you want just a little bit of just plain salt. Sometimes you need a little bit of sugar. I don't like using a lot of sugar. Chinese dishes are not designed to be sweet. The American style buffets are pure garbage as far as I'm concerned. They have, they uh, really, they get a little too far away from what they should be. They could be a lot better. Okay, so this is the wok that I'm using and I'm gonna mostly be using in this series. This is a different wok than what I that I use at home. At home, I've got a big, large cast iron wok, Chinese cast iron wok that I use. I like it. It's a great wok. It works really good on the gas stove. But I have a, I put it on a wok ring now because I don't want to carry a wok and a wok ring and all that. I'm using a flat bottom wok here. Now my one at home that you guys see in the videos there, it's a round bottom wok. It has to sit on a wok ring, or else it wants to wobble it around. This is a flat bottom. It'll sit nice and flat on a flat top stove. Pretty self-explanatory. This is cast iron on the inside, and the outside is enamel. Makes for easy cleanup. And so those are the features that I like. The, the, when I'm traveling, this is the walk that I use, and that's why, because it's got a flat bottom, it's cast iron, easy cleanup, works great. Now, a lot of guys say like the, uh, the walks with a handle, for the show to where you're flipping things around and all that stuff. Well, I don't use one of those. I don't really like them because I'm not into the show part. I'm into the cooking part. And the cast iron walks give you a really good sear. That's what I like. Now, if you want to be able to flip the food around and all that good stuff, and you're going to cook on the super high jet burners and all that, you're probably going to need a burner like that because these are a lot harder to flip. It takes a you got to use basically two hands and it's a lot more motion and I'm not really into all that anyway. So if you're wanting to do all the flipping and all, you need one of the walks that has the uh, handle on it or the long handle. And anyway, that's some tips there. I use this thing now for turning. It's a fish turner. It's got a silicone edge. It does not melt. Uh, it's not plastic, so it's not going to melt. I want to reiterate that. Some folks are always post about, you know, you, it's plastic, it's going to melt. Anyway, no, that's not going to melt. But it gives you a good clean. It's, it's got a sharp edge. It goes under the food really good. It works good. Using the big wooden spoons doesn't work very good because it doesn't really get under the food. But this thing works really good, and it's just something that I like using. Anyway, I hope this video helps you, and we'll be back on the next video, and I'll show you how to make a stir-fry oil.